Hello and welcome back to A-Level Biology Help. So today I'm going to take you through the survival and response section for HUA A-Level Biology. Also, I'll be going through some exam questions and explaining their mark schemes. And as always, there will be timestamps in the comments section to the different parts of the video, so you do not have to watch the whole video if you do not wish to. Right, so let's get started. So, all organisms, living organisms, increase or can increase their chance of survival by responding to changes in their environment. For example, in flowering plants, like the one shown in this image here, specific growth factors move from growing regions to other tissues, where they regulate growth in response to directional stimuli. Directional stimuli can be light or gravity, for example. But for this first part of the video, we are going to focus on a particular response called tropism. Tropism is a directional growth response in plants. Now, there are two types of tropism that you need to know for HUA A-level biology and also for other exam boards too. So the first type is phototropism. Phototropism, as the name suggests, is when shoots and roots so the shoots and roots grow in response to light, so photo light. This is due to a plant hormone called IAA, or indo uh, indole acetic acid. Now you're probably unfamiliar with IAA. IAA is a form of an auxin. Now you probably would have heard about auxins in GCSE. So auxins, including IAA, are plant growth hormones. So here we have a so here we have a quite a terribly drawn shoot by me with molecules of IAA evenly distributed throughout the tip. So if I just get my pen tool out here. So we need to focus here on the tip, which is the top part of the shoot, as IAA is produced in the tip. So as you can see by this diagram of a shoot here, the IAA is pretty evenly distributed. However, when light hits the shoot, the IAA diffuses to the shaded side, so the side that is not being hit by the sunlight. As IAA is a growth hormone and it promotes growth in shoots, the diffusion of IAA to the shader side of the shoot promotes growth and cell elongation. This growth and cell elongation of the shaded side causes the shoot to bend towards light. So cell elongation of the shader side causes the shoot to bend towards the light source. So you might have seen an example of phototropism in sunflowers, as sunflowers tend to bend in the face towards the sun. However, the response Phototropism response is different for roots. So in roots, it follows the same principles at first. So the IAA diffuses towards the shader side of the root. However, in roots, this inhibits growth. So in shoots, it promotes growth. However, in roots, it inhibits growth. So in IAA inhibits growth and cell elongation in roots. This means that the root bends away from light. So as the shader side has a higher concentration of IAA, this inhibits the growth, so causing the root to bend away from the light. When the root bends away from the light, we call this negative phototropism, as the root is moving away from the stimuli. So we can say that for shoots, the response is positive phototropism, as the shoot bends towards light. So the next type of tropism you know, you, that you need to know about is called geotropism or otherwise known as gravitropism. So as the name suggests, geotropism is when shoots and roots grow in response to gravity, hence the name gravitropism or geotropism, it doesn't matter which one you use. So here we have gravity acting on a shoot. So Obviously, when the gravity hits the shoot, 
the IAA respond to the gravity, so they diffuse towards the bottom side of the chute. So IAA diffuses towards the bottom due to the force of gravity. Obviously, um, chutes respond positively towards IAA. So the IAA on the bottom side of the chute causes cell elongation and growth. So increase in IAA concentration on the bottom side of the chute promotes growth and cell elongation. So the chute bends and grows against gravity. So chutes grow upwards against gravity. So this kind of follows the same principle that phototropism does. However, in the case of shoots, we have negative geotropism as the shoot grows against gravity. So obviously, as same as phototropism is, roots respond differently. So the first principle is the same, so IAA diffuses towards the bottom due to gravity. However, as we said in phototropism, IAA inhibits growth and cell elongation. So the root bends and grows towards gravity. So the roots grow downwards. And we call this positive geotropism as the root grows towards gravity. So what about mobile organisms? So insects, humans, animals, etc. For mobile organisms, so mammals, insects, etc., we have three types of survival and responses. First, we have taxis, kinesis, and reflexes. So let's first focus on taxis. So taxis are directional responses in movement due to a stimuli. So the stimuli causes the movement of an organism. Positive taxis is when the organism moves towards the stimuli. So for example, a wood louse may move towards light. Another example is denoted by the image here. So here we have a stimulus, which is a river current. So here we can see the fish here is swimming towards the river current. So this would be an example of positive taxis. So the stimulus is causing the fish to move. So a negative taxis, as the name suggests, is when the organism moves away from the stimuli. An example is that cockroaches move away from light. This is so that they are less likely to be seen by predators. So there are four subtypes of taxis that you need to know about. Chemotaxis, which is a response to a chemical stimulus. Phototaxis, which is a response to a light stimulus. Geotaxis, which is a response to gravity. And rheotaxis, which is a response to movement. So this fish example here is an example of rheotaxis. So now we're going to move on to kinesis. Kinesis is the opposite. So it is a non-directional response in movement due to stimuli. So the stimuli doesn't cause the um, organism to move directly towards or away from the stimulus. So it doesn't move towards or away from the stimulus. An example is when humans move around more when it's cold outside to keep warm, but don't move towards or away from the cold. A an example of this would be that when it's cold, sometimes we jump up and down or stamp our feet. Also, another example that links to the required practical is that a wood louse may make more turns when searching for a favourable environment and vice versa. So they make less turns when they are not searching for a favourable environment. So they are in their favourable environment already. The advantage to making more turns is that they can eventually move towards the favourable environment more quickly. So the turns that they make, the change in turns that they make is a kinesis. But when they actually move towards the favourable source, that will be a taxis. So the final response that we are going to look at are reflexes. They probably have heard of reflexes from GCSE. Reflexes are extremely rapid responses that do not require any thought, so they happen automatically. This creates a protective effect. And the process that, that leads to a reflex is referred to as a reflex arc. So I'm going to explain 
that to you now. So here is a nice image that I actually stole from the internet. So here we have someone's arm above a candle which has a lit flame. So the, the candle here is what we call the stimulus as the flame gives off heat. The high amount of heat is detected by the receptors in the skin. So the detection of the heat by the receptors in the skin sends signals along the sensory neuron, which is this purple neuron here. So the signal is passed along the arm, then up to the spinal cord. Then the signal is passed on to the relay neuron, which is the main neuron inside the spinal cord. This happens through the process of a synapse, which is a chemical messenger that allows the transmission of signals across different neurons. So the signal is transmitted to the relay neuron. Then the signal is transmitted by a synapse again to the motor neuron. Then the signal is transmitted back to, in this case, a muscle, which then contracts so that the hand moves away from the flame. This happens within a very, very short time frame. Now the muscle here is what we call an effector. This is an effector as they, this is what causes the reflex, so the moving of the hand away from the flame. Right, that is it for the content, and now I'm going to take you through a few exam style questions. So if I just get my highlighter tool out now. So the first question says, give one similarity and one difference between a taxis and a tropism. So this is basically fact recall, as it is not asking you to explain your answer. So you're probably already thinking taxis and tropisms are types of responses. And they are both directional responses. So a similarity could be that they both involve directional responses to a stimulus. However, a difference I've written is that in the taxis, the whole organism moves. And when tropism occurs, that is a growth response, exemplified by the plant example that I showed you earlier. So let's look at the mark scheme. So the first marking point, so the similarity, you could write that it is a directional response to a stimulus or a movement towards or away from a stimulus. So we would get that mark. The second marking point, so a difference, is that the, in a taxi, the whole organism moves and tropism is a growth response. So we would get both marks for this question. Also, it says here, you must be clear which one, taxis or tropism, they are referring to. So if you don't make it clear, you may not get a mark, so you might lose some marks. Also, it says here, taxis occurs in animal slash motile organisms and tropism occurs in plants. So you could write this as well to get a mark. So let's move on. So here is a nice question here. So scientists investigated tropisms in the roots of tomato plants. Now the key term here is roots, as these have a different response to shoots. They grew tomato plants from seeds on vertical agar plates, as shown in figure one. The top of each plate was made of agar gel containing no salt. The bottom of each plate was made on one of the following, agar gel containing no salt, and then agar gel containing salt. Typical results for growth of the roots are shown in figure one. So here we have the response of the roots with the agar gel containing no salt on the left here and the agar gel containing salt here on the right. So as you can see, they have quite different responses. So here the roots are going downwards and here the roots are going sideways, so away from the salt. So the question asks, what do these results show about the responses of the roots of tomato plants to gravity and salt? And I think this is a three mark question as well. Well, as you can see, in the agar gel containing no salt, the roots are continue, continuing to grow downwards, so towards gravity. Also, they are growing towards the salt. However, with the agar gel, gel, gel containing salt, the roots are growing away from the salt. So this is what I've written. So the gr roots grow towards gravity, as shown in this particular agar gel here, but away from the salt, exemplified by this diagram here. 
Also, I've written that this shows that salt has more of an effect than gravity, as the there is a stark difference between the agar gel containing no salt and the agar gel containing salt, which has more of an effect than gravity. So let's look at the Mars scheme. So the first working point says there's growth in the direction of or toward the pull of gravity. You don't need to write the term pull of as it is in brackets. So we will get that mark. Also it says here, accept tropism for growth, but ignore pulled by gravity, as we are not referring to gravitational pull here. Also it accepts positively geotropic or gravitropic. So we will get that mark. So the second marking point says they grow away from salt. So we wrote these two points in the same sentence. We still got both of those marks. Also, it accepts negatively chemotropic as salt is a chemical or halotropic. Also, it says here in mark points one and two, ignore references to bends slash moves. Because it is specifically asking you about the effects of gravity and salt. And the third marking point says salt has more of an effect than gravity. So, so we would get all three marks of the question. Also, it says accept converse statement for gravity and note that all three points may appear in one sentence. So in our case, mark points one and two appeared in one sentence. So let's move on to the next question. So in root tips of tomatoes, again, highlighting the term, highlighting the term root, IAA is transported out of the cells by a carrier protein. In roots of tomatoes, high concentrations of IAA inhibit cell elongation. The scientist's hypothesis was that salt causes a change in the number of IAA carrier proteins in cells in different parts of the root tips. Figure 2 shows cells, two cells, L and R, in the root tip of a tomato plant. So here we have a root tip with two cells, L and R. So here we can see cell L contains a lot more carrier proteins, so six carrier proteins compared to just two carrier proteins in cell R. Now the question says, explain why this root tip would grow away from the salt. So as this is an explained question, you need to justify your descriptions. So you need to write why something occurs. So this is what I have suggested. So there are more carrier proteins in cell L, as you can see by the diagram. So there is less IAA in cell L. Now I've written that there is less IAA in cell L because it says in the question that a IAA is transported out of the cells by a carrier protein. So if there are more carrier proteins, then more IAA is transported out. Next I've written that this means that there is more cell elongation and growth in cell L. This is because in the question it says IAA inhibits cell elongation in roots. So if there is less IAA, there is a higher cell elongation in cell L. So let's take a look at the Mart scheme again. So the first parking point says more carriers in cell L, or you put there are, there are less carriers in cell R, so we would get that mark. Also, it accepts, it, it accepts left for L and right for R, or side near a salt for L. So the second marking point says, so there's less IAA in cell, cell L or more IAA in cell R. So we would get that mark as well. Also, it accepts more IAA moves out of L or less IAA moves out of R. So the third marking point says, so more elongation or growth in L or that there is less elongation in growth of R. So we would get all three marks again. Also, it accepts less inhibition of growth in L and more inhibition of growth in R. So you can refer to inhibition to get the third mark as well. Right, so let's move on to the final set of questions. So scientists investigated the response of the roots of pea seedlings to gravity. So we are focusing on geotropism in roots here. So they took three samples of seedlings, A, B and C, and placed them so that their roots were grown horizontally. The reason why scientists grow roots horizontally in gravitropism experiments is that they can more clearly see the response to gravity if they are horizontal. So the root tips of each sample had been given different treatments. 
After a set time, the scientists recorded whether the roots of the seedlings had grown upwards or downwards and the amount of curvature. The table shows the treatment they, had, they gave to each sample and their results. So here we have the nice table here. So treatment A had, give, had actually been given no treatment and the direction of growth is downwards with a 60 degrees curvature. Treatment B was when root, the root tip was removed, which continues to grow horizontally and has no curvature. And finally, treatment C is when the upper half of the root tip was removed, so the direction of growth was downwards and the mean amount of curvature was 30 degrees. So the first part of the question asks, the pea seedlings were kept in the dark after each treatment. Explain where this is necessary. So as I said earlier in the video, roots grow in response to light by phototropism. So obviously if they weren't kept in the dark, light would have an effect on the root tips. Obviously the scientists are investigating gravity, so if the um, root tips were affected by light, this would obscure the results. So keeping the pea seedlings in the dark kind of like acts as a control. So this is what I've written. So the scientists were only measuring the effects of gravity. So if we look at the mark scheme, you can either put the seedlings respond to light or phototropic. And also it says here, reject roots are positive phototropic or grow towards light, as this is false, as roots are negatively phototropic. Or you can put it only measures, so they are only measuring the effect of gravity or response to gravity. So we would get the mark for the question. Also it says neutral to control a variable and neutral light affects growth or results. So you, the examiner doesn't really want you to write these points. So let's move on to the next part of the question. So the next part of the question says, what conclusion can be made from the results for treatment B? So you need to summarise what happens in treatment B. So for this question, we need to look at the table and look at what happens in treatment B. So in treatment B, the root tip is removed and the root continues to grow horizontally with no curvature. This suggests that cells in the root tip respond to gravity. As the root tip is removed and the rest of the root isn't grown towards gravity, showing that it is mainly the cells in the root tip that respond to gravity. So let's look at the mark scheme. So you can either put cells in root, root tip detect gravity or respond to gravity, which I wrote. So we would get that mark. Also it says here you must refer to the root tip and not just the root. As the um, root tip is removed in treatment B. Or you could write IAA or auxin is produced in the root tip. So you can put either one of these to get the mark. If you put both of these points you don't get two marks. You can only get a maximum of one mark. So let's move on to the last questions of the video. So it suggests how indole acetic acid or IAA could have caused the results for treatment A and treatment C. So these are two marks each. So let's focus on treatment A first. Treatment A was actually not given any treatment. And the direction of growth was downwards with a curvature of 60 degrees. So this is basically asking you to describe the effects of IAA on the growth in roots. So I've written IAA diffuses to the lower side or the bottom as gravity is taking an effect on the root. So the lower side grows less, as I said in earlier in the video, as IAA inhibits root growth. So now let's look at treatment C. In treatment C, the upper half of the root tip is removed and the root continues to grow downwards with a curvature of 30 degrees. So this is what I've written for treatment C. So in treatment C, less IAA is produced. There is a quick tiny typo here that is supposed to say produced. So the lower side grows faster. This suggests why the mean amount of curvature is slightly less than A as less IAA is being produced as part of the root tip is removed. Right, so let's look at the mark scheme. So the mark scheme says, so for treatment A, IAA or auxin moves to the lower side or there's more IAA or auxin on the lower side. So we would get that mark. 
Also, it accepts references to cell elongation instead of growth. So you can write either one of these, those to get them up. The second marking point says lower side grows less or slower, or the upper side grows more or faster and inhibits growth on the lower side. We wrote that the lower side grows less, so we would get the second mark. Also, it says, note, if auction is placed at the upper side, mark point two can still be awarded. However, you need an idea of less or slower or more slash faster for mark point two. So you need to refer to one of these words to get mark point two, as you are comparing results. So for treatment C, the mark scheme says less IAA or auxin is produced, so we would get that mark as we wrote less IAA is produced. And the second marking point says the lower side grows more or grows faster, or that is, there is less inhibition of growth on the lower side. We wrote that the lower side grows faster, so we would get both marks for this part of the question. Also, you must refer to the lower side as IAA diffuses to the lower side due to gravity. As, as we can see from early in the question that the scientists are investigating response to gravity. Right, that is all I want to say for this video actually. Um, thank you very, very much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them and I will see you in the next video.